Between Two Wings. I'm your host, Emily Norman, and today we have Kate Gunderson with us. She is a mechanical and aerospace engineer, and soon she'll be embarking on her next engineering journey at the National Test Pilot School. Kate, thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk with you. For sure. And so we start off each episode by just kind of explaining what our backgrounds are. I picked um, St. Martin. I'm at Maho Beach right now. You can kind of see me waving in this corner. It was one of my bucket list beaches, and now it's one of my bucket list airports to land at. But tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, that's really cool. Um, mine is a space shuttle launching um, because that is what inspired me to go into engineering and to begin a career in the space industry. And it inspired me all the way back to second grade when I stood in the driveway with my dad and looked up at the night sky and just was awe inspired by all of it. So that's why I chose that background. <laughs> it's great to see that you got inspired just by a rocket launch and now you're in the position that you are today. So tell us a little bit about what it's like to be you know, aerospace engineer and flight science officer. Yeah, so I get to um, do some really cool, uh, be, participate in some really cool different things, um, both in aviation and the space industry. So as an aerospace engineer, I help, uh, I work on a fleet of two Gulfstream aircraft that um, fly airborne science missions all over the world. So it's pretty cool because um, we get to see the project life cycle from uh, requirements definition, all the way to um, designing a, a payload integration where how we're gonna mount it inside the aircraft. Um, and then we go through all those reviews, the airworthiness review, and then we get to um, go and fly the mission. And I, as a flight science officer, I get to fly on the mission with the, the instrument and the instrument teams. Um, so that's really, really fun. And uh, I'm a big picture person. So seeing that whole project life cycle is really important to me. Yeah. And what were some of the important skills that you learned or realized that you had uh, when you started working at this job? Um, so it's kind of funny. I used to get these comments that I was really bubbly for an engineer and I thought they were kind of <laughs> backhanded compliments. But yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think one of the things my employer values so much about me is that I am a people person and that I can both do the technical, but I can also, uh, I play well in a team and I, um, I, I can bring up those leadership, um, be a good leader when I need to be and, um, work well with our customers. So I think the teamwork and the like outgoing nature that I have are really skills that have served me well in my career. Yeah, definitely. And what is the relationship that you kind of play between your job role and the pilots themselves? Yeah, so um, I'm considered air crew on our aircraft as a flight science officer. We kind of replaced the traditional flight engineer that we used mm -hmm. to fly, fly with because our airplanes just don't require them. Um, so I'm usually either in the front jump seat sitting behind the pilots or I'll be back in, in the back of the aircraft with the, the customers, the science customers, and I'll be on a headset that's looped in with the pilots so that I can kind of monitor what's going on with ATC and then I can also, um, based on weather or other different parameters that we um, receive from the customer, we can kind of communicate on what we need to do next, what science lines we need to fly or maybe um, modify in order to reach their objectives. So it's kind of cool um, to, to just play that liaison role between the customer and the pilots. Yeah, I definitely think you have um, one of the coolest jobs there, even though you know, you're not <laughs> flying the actual aircraft, just being able to kind of be a fly on the wall as far as, you know, the comms, what's going on all the time, and then actually mm -hmm. play an important role for the entire mission itself. So I know you're going to the National Test Pilot School. Congrats again on Thank you know, you. <laughs> getting that scholarship. That's incredible. Um, tell us a little about that first. What was the scholarship that you received there? Yes. So um, the National Test Pilot School awards two fellowships each year to aspiring flight test engineers. And they do that because if you look at the um, at the industry of flight test, uh, a flight test, there really mm -hmm. aren't a lot of, of flight test engineers that haven't come from the military. So this is kind of their um, way of getting more flight test engineers trained up. Um, and so it is a three-year program that is fully funded. Um, it's about a million dollar program. Um, if you were to, if you were to just pay it out of pocket, it's about a million dollars. Oh man. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't have that kind of money. So the fellowship has been 
awesome to uh, be awarded that. But um, so it's three years, you work as a graduate assistant, and then you also take all the classes in the professional course that flight test engineers and test pilots take. And um, you also walk away with a master's degree in flight test engineering. They um, basically are a huge part of the flight test campaign from start to finish. So they help um, coordinate the team uh, of maintenance personnel, test pilots, um, you know, everything you could think of, engineers. Um, they coordinate that whole team. Um, they plan the flight test and the and determine what kind of data points you need to hit in order to collect the data that you need. Um, they collect the data, analyze the data, and then they can put it together into a report and report their findings, people who are gonna make the decisions on where to spend money and, or if you're like certifying an aircraft, that whole test campaign is really important and instrumental to that process. So, yeah, for sure. I can only imagine, especially trying to, you know, break it down for people who are spending so much money on some of these projects and missions that, you know, derive from this type of flying. So are there any kind of similarities that you might have seen from, you know, being a flight engineer, being a you know test flight engineer to potentially being like a private pilot, you know, someone who maybe like owns and maintains their own aircraft? I myself am not a private pilot, but I would love to get my pilot's license sometime soon. Um, but I definitely think having that background in how an aircraft works and, um, and all that stuff is really important to, um, you know, a role as a flight test engineer. I think that it would help me a lot to get a private pilot's license, but I think some of the skills I've learned and just being around aircraft and watching the pilots with through their checklist and all that, I think that's helped me a lot. Um, being a pilot is all about reading checklists. It's very operational. And mm -hmm. I think flight test engineering is a good mix of technical and um, operational. So I definitely see the similarities there operationally for sure. Yeah, I feel like getting your uh, private pilot's license, you kind of, you know, you hone in on the actual flying stick and rider skills, but you kind of like scrape, you know, the maintenance side, the engineering mm -hmm. side and in some very small aspect, <laughs> definitely not yeah. in depth at all. <laughs> There's always more <laughs> we could be learning. So, you know, obviously aircraft are really cool, but spaceships are a lot cooler <laughs> in my opinion. And your dream is to actually become an astronaut and you've applied to be an astronaut before. What was that process like? Yeah. So I applied, I think it was all the way back in 2019 now. Was it, I think it was 2020. It was during the pandemic. So I've lost <laughs> yeah. track. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's a pretty lengthy process just because, and I, like I had said, like I said, I had never done it before. So I didn't really know what to expect um, other than like I had talked to astronauts about it in the past, but um, so first you have to, it starts out in USA jobs, um, uh, which is the government's, um, basically job posting website. Um, mm -hmm. and so you fill out a jobs profile on there where you're putting in all the information you would normally have on your resume into the system. Um, then you have to upload your transcripts, um, your educational transcripts, and then you have, um, qualifying questions to see that you qualify and meet the general minimum requirements. So it will ask you questions about like, uh, would you be willing to go on long trips away from the planet or <laughs> stuff like that? Cause obviously okay, I don't how want do you something. word that? Like, <laughs> would you like to strap yourself to a rocket and, you know, take a really nice vacation? Like, <laughs> I feel like it asks you something kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then just when you think you're all done, it then sends you to another section. Um, so you submit and then it goes to another section and then you have an assessment, which is three parts. And there's one on like your work style. Um, there's one that asks you all these questions about, um, does this sound more like you or does this sound more like you? And sometimes both of those, you're like, those both don't sound that great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do so you like was... dehydrated food? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, there was an essay. I think it was kind of just to see that you have, um, good, you can speak well, um, or write at least, um, in the English language. So yeah, it asked you that, or you had a 25 or so minutes to do an essay. Um, but yeah, that was the assessment. I remember walking away from the assessment and being like, my brain hurts. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, you know, obviously your background is probably something that they're looking for. You have experience, you know, flight test engineer, um, you know, experience in the aerospace industry in general, but what are some of the kind of unique or unusual, unusual backgrounds that you've seen um, for astronauts? Um, some of the ones that stand out to me are, I'm, you've had Navy SEALs. There was a, mm -hmm. there's a guy, uh, I think it's Johnny Kim, who everyone was talking about during the last um, astronaut selection announcement, um, because Navy SEAL, a uh, medical doctor, like Harvard trained medical doctor, and he had done, so, oh, and then he had become an astronaut, and he was like, <laughs> he's, he's pretty young. So that was really interesting. Um, one of the astronauts was like the station chief in American Samoa. Um, one had like um, done uh, under ice diving with penguins as part of her research. So using backgrounds and people who have done these things in like kind of remote areas of the world. Um, not everyone's like that, of course, but those are the ones <laughs> that definitely, definitely st uh, stuck out to me. For sure. And, you know, just kind of in general, you seem like you're a really big advocate for helping women get into STEM careers and starting off with STEM education. Can you go into that a little bit for us? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in this small town in North Dakota, and I didn't really know what engineers did and all that, but my parents were always super supportive of anything that I wanted to do. So I didn't really, I didn't go into college prepared for the fact that I would be like, <laughs> There, there wouldn't be equal percentages of men and women in this field. Like I had no idea that women, like the percentage is very small, like 18% of women compared to the men, you know? Um, so I wasn't really prepared for that. And I honestly didn't have a ton of female friends in college. And so um, I think it's really important to have um, a community of people supporting you when you're going through um, school and doing hard things. I think engineering is pretty hard. Um, so I wanted to build a community for um, young women to see that there are um, other people succeeding in their field and that they can do anything they set their mind to. Um, so that's one reason. And then, yeah, I think it's really important to have um, role models and to see people who look like you succeeding in the things you want to do. So that's also why I share my experiences as well. For sure. And I know you're going to continue to do that, not only through your social media channels, but also your blog, which we will link to later for everyone to check out. Uh, Kate, th thank you so much for coming on Between Two Wings today. And I am so excited to see what you do on your next endeavor. Thank you so much. It was so, such a pleasure. <laughs> and everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this episode Between Two Wings. We'll see you next time.